Uh, it's called the Puerto Rican Cuatro, which is number four in Spanish. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, right? So um, I, I think in the uh, 1800s, it only had about four strings, hence the name. It evolved uh, into a 10 string, which is the one I play, which is known as the modern Cuatro. Uh, my name is Jose Gabriel Munoz, uh, originally from, born in Puerto Rico, but raised uh, here in Jersey. Um, something I love about the music in Trent, and it, it feels so organic. It feels so natural. Everything you hear, every artist you witness uh, or meet is so unique in their own respective ways that you know once you experience music in Trenton, you're not going to see someone like that or hear something like that anywhere else. That's something that I'm very proud to say about uh, the city of Trenton. and. Um, uh, and I hope to con continue seeing that uh, flourish as time goes by. The ensemble for the folkloric music of Puerto Rico consists of a guitar, which to me represents Spain, because that's that influence. It also consists of a scratch gourd, which that to me, it comes from, uh, um, or not from me, but historically that comes from our Taino Indian natives in Puerto Rico. And then we have minor percussions such as congos or bongos that comes from the African influence. Then you have the cuatro, where does that come from? It's something that we all, we've all learned that it was born in Puerto Rico, made up of all these influences and the struggle that our people have been through to get to where we are. And, and it's, it's an instrument that I'm super proud to, to, to interpret because of that reason. I can say, hey, this is, this is genuinely all ours. No one else has this instrument. It was born here. The guitar, all over the world. Bongos, congas, you can see those in every band mostly. But a cuatro is so scarce, it's so rare, and so unique to me that, that um, it just, it fills me up with more and more pride every time I, I play. <laughs> I've been playing for close to 30 years. Uh, I've had the privilege um, to play with a lot of great musicians, some world famous, some not, but I, I usually don't toot my own horn about that. I, I see it as a passion to perform, not as, hey, here are my goals, this is what I've done. But with that being said, um, um, I was able to, uh, back in 2014, open up for a gentleman by the name of Edwin Colon Sayas. He's basically modern history's world's greatest cuatro player. Uh, and when I received the phone call to open up for him in Chicago, my jaw dropped because I could literally name you cuatro players that I feel are more qualified. So it was a humbling experience. I was honored to do it, and I was able to travel to Chicago at the Harris Theater and open up for Edwin, um, which is something that, I mean, I could die happy after that, right? Um, then a year later, I received a phone call from Washington uh, from the Library of Congress asking me to come play and, and do a concert, um, which I humbly accepted also. Um, no questions asked, just for the experience basically and for the passion to share our music. Um, and we traveled to the Library of Congress in Washington and we were able to do a, a concert. And um, I performed there and then we did a um, oral history interview um, at the library archives which is something that blew my mind when I sat there with the gentleman conducting the interview when he told me, you do know that this is going to be archived as part of American history forever at the Library of Congress. And I was shaking because you know, I felt such a, uh, a weight on my shoulders and a responsibility to represent the instrument and all the cuatro players 
out there. Because here is little old me from Trent, New Jersey, when there's like monster cuatro players in Puerto Rico, they could have called. Um, but we were up for the task. We took on the responsibility. We did the, the interview. Um, and then they asked us to do um, a concert at the Kennedy Center in Washington, which I then learned I was the second cuatro player in history to ever do a concert at the Kennedy Center in Washington in front of thousands of people. And I'm glad they didn't tell me that before the show because I probably would have fainted. But um, it, was a, it was an awesome experience to do that. Yo me acuerdo que te vi andando por la plaza Te invité a una taza en la ciudad del Vivi But you mentioned to me Yo no busco a ninguno Mami soy el número This isn't my full-time job. I mean, I don't live off the music. Um, for the past 20 years, I've been a, um, a humane law enforcement investigator. I'm currently chief of my division, and I developed a passion for that as chief, uh, as an, an investigator also. Um, and so my job basically consists of investigating all forms and types of animal cruelty. Um, I kind of just fell into it. It wasn't something I was looking for. But once I got in there, I feel like my eyes were open to a whole other world of animals in need. Um, and I developed such a, a dying passion for it. And I've been doing it for 20 years now. Uh, and I mean, it's something I love to do. It's something I love to do. Again, I, as I said, the music was more like a therapy for me, so, sort of like an escape, because what I do for a living is stressful. There's nights you lose sleep over it. Um, and it's, it's, it, it went from like a therapy to a passion for me to do music. So it's like I have these two passions meshed together. Um, but I don't think I would change what I do uh, for the world. I love what I do. Um, I've loved it always, and I, and I plan to continue doing it.